Next up, we've got value classes. A value class can be a great choice when you want to wrap a simple type with a strong domain model. So for example, a lot of times when you've got a function that has multiple string parameters next to each other, it's easy to get the arguments mixed up like I did here. We could help to mitigate this by introducing a class for each one of these parameters like this. And this is a reasonable approach for small sets of data, but if we were processing a large batch of books from a file or a database, we would start taking a hit on performance because instantiating each book is gonna require allocating space on the heap, not just for the books uh, and the strings, but also for the ID, the title and the author of each one. So instead we can turn these into value classes, which if we're targeting the JVM also requires us to add this at JVM inline annotation for now. By changing these to value classes, Kotlin can optimize them so that their runtime performance is basically going to be roughly the same as if they were the underlying integer or string types. Now, a value class has got to include exactly one property, and it has to be a read-only, so you have to declare it with val. And value classes are especially powerful when they're used with JVM primitive types, because the primitive types go on the stack instead of on the heap. So again, use value classes to wrap a simple value with a strong type, which will improve type safety, usually without the overhead of the additional object allocation.